next few minutes talking about monopolistic competition. Now that may sound a bit like an oxymoron, but it's, it's a very descriptive term for the market structure we want to talk about. Monopolistic competition. This is one step away from perfect competition. You remember perfect competition had four assumptions. Remember those? Many small buyers and sellers, a homogeneous product, easy entry and exit into and out of the market, and perfect information. We're going to change one of those assumptions strongly right now, and that will allow us to take that perfectly competitive model and make it a little more realistic with respect to the, the real world. Monopolistic competition. A lot of competition, but every seller trying to create in his own way his own monopoly, to be the only one who's got a particular product. So the, the assumption we're going to change here is rather than homogeneous products, all of them identical to the consumer, we're going to call them or, or allow for product differentiation so that each seller now can differentiate his product, make it different from his competitors in some way. He may make a smaller or a larger size. He may paint it a different color. He may give it a warranty. He may give it a fancy name. He may do more advertising for it and create a, a desire on people's parts to have only that brand. So now we have a lot more competition in the way of advertising and marketing and, in fact, in the design and manufacture of the products. So this is probably the most realistic model we're going to use to represent reality. Every company trying to make themselves distinct, separate, and more desirable than their customers. Monopolistic competition. Now, from perfect competition, from here on out, the next three market structures, including this one, are forms of imperfect competition. If it's not perfect, it's imperfect. And if it's imperfect, we can identify that on the graph by seeing a negative slope demand curve for the firm. This is for a single company. And now we'll always see negatively sloped demand curves, not that perfectly elastic horizontal demand curve from perfect competition. And when we get a negative slope demand curve, it has a separate marginal revenue curve, which has twice the slope, and it's located inside or below the demand curve, and extends down into negative numbers. Okay? We're using a straight line demand curve, a separate marginal revenue curve. If that's not comfortable to you, go back and review it. Taking those, these two as starting points, we say, well, what's going to go on in this company? Well, they have the same cost structures as the perfect competitor. They have an average total cost curve with its typical U-shape. They have an average variable cost curve that I'm not going to use because that's not part of our discussion, but it is there. And then they have the marginal cost curve, which starts out with a little hook in it and goes through the lowest point on the average total cost curve. So here's our situation, and we want to follow the same steps we've been doing in the past. The first thing we're going to look for is point alpha. Alpha, the beginning of everything. Alpha is the point where marginal cost intersects or equals marginal revenue. On this graph, this is not marginal revenue, this is. So marginal revenue, marginal cost intersect right here. That's point alpha. Alpha tells us the quantity to produce. So this is the quantity. We'll call it Q1 and alpha 1. This is the quantity the firm wants to produce and sell. And so their next decision is to choose the price that will accomplish this goal, that will sell this many units. Remember, in perfect competition, they didn't choose the price. The price was determined by the market. Now they're price makers. They determine what price works for them. And in order to sell this quantity, they read up to the price line, also known as the demand curve, and they read all the way up to that and say, aha, that's where I want to be on my demand curve to sell that many units. And the price that corresponds to that is price level one. So here's this firm in its equilibrium, a monopolistic competitor, in the short run. And we'll move into the long run in a minute, but what's going on here? How's this company doing? And the answer is, at this quantity of output, now we do the profit thing, right? Total profit. We read up, and we say, there's the price. We also read up to the average total cost curve and say, oh, this is the average total cost for producing that many units. And so the difference between price and average total cost is either the profit or the loss. In this case, 
the price is high, it's above the average total cost. So this entire rectangle represents the profits of the company. So here we have the, shir the, the firm in short-term equilibrium earning an economic profit, price above average total cost. Very similar to what could have happened in perfect competition when the price was above the average total cost curve at whatever output they were operating at. What's going to happen next? It's very similar to perfect competition. Every company is making economic profits that will attract more competitors. This company will wake up tomorrow maybe, look outside and say, oh my goodness, there's a lot more competitors out there on the street. And so those competitors will be taking away some of their customers. And so this firm will have fewer customers. It will lose part of its market share. As its market share shrinks and has fewer buyers, a decrease in the number of buyers decreases the demand curve. At an extreme, suppose their demand curve shifted way over here, D2. And it has a marginal revenue curve, MR2. So this is their world the next day. How's it doing? Where's point alpha? That's where we start, right? Well. Marginal cost, marginal revenue, looks like an intersection over here. Uh, read up to a price here and a quantity here, quantity 2, price 2. But then when we read up to average cost 2, the company is losing money to the extent of that little pink rectangle. And so if they're losing money, what's going to happen? Just like in perfect competition, some of the companies are going to go out of business. The ones with the deeper pockets, more savings are going to last a little longer as the other competition disappears. Demand will move back out, maybe even making them profitable again. And so in the short run, the demand curve is constantly fluctuating. You have profits sometimes. You have losses other times, just like perfect competition. So that's the short run equilibrium in monopolistic competition. You may be making a profit. You may be taking a loss. Let's look now what happens in the long run. Just a very brief step forward, but let me clean this graph up a minute. Okay, we've got the graph cleaned up a bit. Here's their average total cost curve. We said at times the demand curve is going to be up in here, allowing them room for some profit. At other times it's going to fall below average total cost where they're going to take a loss. In the long run, though, what is going to happen? Much like perfect competition, in the long run, all the profits or losses are going to be eliminated, and the company is going to go to a break-even level of operation. But remember, the demand curve is not flat, so they won't be tangent to average total cost down here. But their new long-run demand curve will be tangent to the average total cost curve somewhere along in here that's supposed to be tangent. Let's call that D long run, where you have a point of tangency here. And that's where they'll be operating. And if we were to fill in the marginal revenue and marginal cost curves, this is their quantity, they would have, say, a marginal revenue curve here and a marginal cost curve here. This would be their alpha, if that's not too messy. But this point of tangency between the demand curve and the average total cost curve is their long-run position. And when it's tangent here, what? The price and the average total cost are the same. So the company is earning a normal profit, no economic profit. It's breaking even. So it can remain there in the long run. It's making enough accounting profit to stay in business until something else disturbs the market. Remember the five factors that shift demand or the five factors that shift supply. So here we are. This is the company, the monopolistic competitor in long run equilibrium, a point of tangency with the average total cost curve, but not the same point of tangency you would have seen in perfect competition.